here's our next project. I've got a Lucknow brand six foot three point hitch snow blower. The um, serial number 94, can't read it, looks like it says 930. Models S60. Well, I don't think that's correct because this is a 72 inch. Should be a model 70, I think it is. Um, I looked up a S60 and they're all five foot. I didn't get an owner's manual. I bought this about 15, almost 20 years ago probably. And bought it used on Marketplace and it, um, it has been working fine. The only problem I have with it is occasionally the snow will stick inside the chute and there's a little surface rust. It's a 12 inch manual driven chute and it's 24 inches high, single auger and it's hit, it's hit the pavement a few times here as you can see but there's no major wear here. Um, I think part of the snow sticking is the clearance is pretty tight between the fan and of course it sits outside. It's probably been a little bit of salt in it. So I think what I want to do is service this, clean it up, probably paint it. And the paint I think would help the snow from sticking so bad. And um, it doesn't really stick in this area. Like I said, it's in this and then right in here. I think they do the little vents in here so it doesn't clog. But it does clog up once in a while when it's wet and heavy. If I don't get to it the same day. The chain is a one inch. I replaced that a couple years ago. And I lost a drive link in it or something. And chain got banged up in here as you see the bend in this. And I think a rock caught it is what it was and um, or a piece of firewood. I remember something getting caught in it and um, I think I cleaned too close to the wood pile or something. And uh, it's easy to do when you're in deep snow. So I put the chain on but now I want to fix that up. The other thing I did is I put a, a new bearing on here. It was a little worn and the uh, sense I made out of this was putting putting this gear tensioner below it so the chain would bend in the opposite direction. Originally the tensioner was above it so the chain was just like a bicycle chain and I think that when it froze up overnight the chain would keep that that memory and um, so I did the opposite way and I think it keeps it clearer I tried looking up an owner's manual, and like I said, I couldn't come up with one. I couldn't find any description on it. I think the model year is 1983, is what the tag says. But, um, like I said, this thing's been working good. I think the uh, when I first got it, I put um, some gear lube in here. I want to check that, see about changing that out. The uh, manual chute... It's a little bit annoying here because sometimes when you lift the three point up it's in the way um, but it's not that often I turn direction but uh, let me set you up and I'll do some servicing on this see if you're interested I'm gonna get on the tedious task of cleaning it up it's been parked on blocks all summer and it's uh, I think it's snow flurry now today. It's about 30, 30 right now, I think. And uh, what I want to do is just chip off any rust, brush off any dirt. I'll probably take the vacuum in some harder to reach spots. Just want to get this prettied up a little bit. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time worrying about body work on it. I just want to. Since I'm just implement paint to uh, stick, I've got some leftover uh, uh, New Holland blue. This is a, a Ford color, but it's pretty close. A little bit brighter. 
And uh, it's nice to just go through your equipment and look it all over and check things out. Lube it up. Check the chain adjustment. I already went over that, but I uh, want to grease up the uh, PTO shaft. Check this cable. Probably tape off these links because these edges are sharp. Um, just get a good coat of paint on it. Get it clean on the inside. And uh, lube up the chain. Just pretty much everything. And so I'm probably not going to bore you with all this, but it's going to take a while. There's a lot down inside the uh, chute area. It's going to be hard to reach. I'll just take a stiff bristle broom, a little brush like this, or wire brush, and chip it off, and then I'll paint it. So I'll come back on and show you. All right, I've got uh, in my collection some Magic tractor and truck implement exterior oil, Ford Blue. Looks like New Holland Blue, but I had this laying around quite a while, and I think this is going to look just fine. I've got a used brush. I'm just going to brush it on, not too heavy, and uh, show you a little example. I think it's going to look pretty sharp here. Um, I could add some hardener to this if I could find it. I thought I had some, and it would help it. But this is just an implement. Um, I want to go down and do the auger, everything down inside the chute, especially well. That's where the hardener would be good and dry quicker. But I think I'll turn some heat on in here when I'm done, and this will help dry it. But I just want to brush a little of this on here, back and forth, get it in there good. And this is pretty rugged paint. I painted a snow plow with it and it stayed on pretty well. And uh, so you get the idea. That looks pretty good. And uh, it's going to be tedious. I might get a larger brush I get on the open areas. And then... Um, that's about it. I'm going to show you when it's done. Part of the servicing. Well, you know, I changed my mind. I think I'm going to show you a little closer after I chip the paint off. Um, here's a spot that I just brushed a little on. Here's the old Ford blue color. And uh, let's see here. I just want to show you why I want to paint this in case you can't tell. See the sides? That's from, um, you know, brushing the icy snow banks and so on. And then what's really important is down here in the chute. I should have showed you in the beginning here rip better, but see, there's no paint at all on the inside of this. It's all worn off. And then if you get down inside the auger a little closer and then up in the fan, you see that? I want to, I scraped that pretty good. And then I vacuumed it, so I just want to get that, a coat of paint on it, and uh, get this thing so the snow won't stick. This side isn't too bad, but this side over here, like I said, is pretty rough. And so, I just want to show you before and after. Here's a little peek at the uh, front. Like I said, I just did a brush. I didn't use any hardener, but um, definitely I don't want any uh, road salt to get at the metal. I get down to the end of the drive, and of course I'm on the road, so there is salt. So I want to keep that off of there. So next I'm going to tackle the uh, auger, and I might just throw some in an old paint sprayer and put it on much easier, but I'll see. I got... Two old brushes here I'm using and uh, you can see how rusted this side is paints all chipped off and like I said I'm not doing body work I'm not gonna sand on and get the chips out I could care less I just want to get a coat on there the stickers the obvious you know getting wound up in a PTO or an auger and leave these old stickers on there I could probably print off some and laminate them and make new ones but it's common sense and when my son was small and I was snow blowing I wouldn't allow him outside and I kept training him teaching him when somebody's on a piece of equipment not to uh, approach even a lawnmower from the back always come around to the front because you're not expecting a person there and you definitely don't want to run over somebody 
But uh, anyways, I just want to touch this all up. And I think what I'm going to do for the auger area, if you want to glance down in here, is um, that's going to be difficult to do with a brush. So I think I'm just going to get out a little thinner and I'll thin this down and I'll spray it outside. I won't need a respirator out there. I do have one, but I don't want the overspray on everything. I am dripping it on the old concrete floor here, which I don't care too much because one of my projects coming up I'm hoping to do is uh, uh, fill and epoxy this floor so it's easier to clean. And uh, But I just want to see if you guys are interested in content like this. I didn't turn any heat on yet, and this old oil paint is pretty thick. And um, so I'm getting, you know, you really got to press it in there. I'm getting a couple runs, and, you know, like I said, I don't much care. It just looks so much better. If you agree, I gave you a before photo. And I'm a pretty good painter, but I can't paint squatting down with gloves on, a car hard on. It's all beat up. I don't have any arm movement, and uh, it's just a piece of equipment, you know. Just want to get it on, and sometimes you you brush it on like this back and forth, and you can really get it to sink into that metal. And uh, sometimes when you spray it on, it goes on a little bit thin. Which, like I said, you get all that overspray, and it smells terrible. And these bearings are greasable on the inside. Just want to get some old paint on there. I bet when this was brand new it looked pretty, but pretty doesn't get the job done. And this operates fairly quiet. And uh, like I said, I haven't had too much problem. I did look up online a schematic of how this chain adjuster goes, and I, I ground the center out. It had like a center stop where you could put the bolt in the top or the bottom and make your chain tensioner up or down and I I decided to do it this direction so the chain bends in both directions figuring it wouldn't seize up that way but doesn't this look so much better I'm sure I'll have to touch it up when I get it hooked up and out of here but it looks all right so I'll show you a final after I get her sprayed All right, it's cold outside. I had to thin the paint quite a bit because it's thick. Trying to get this to cover. I can't do the brush. It's just too difficult down in there. But the rest of it turned out okay, as you can see. Got a couple runs, I don't care. But the gun, the gun is getting gummed up. It's just a Harbor Freight. And uh, it takes quite a while. Makes the compressor run quite a bit, but it's about time for another gun and it's soaked this for about a month. Not really getting a whole lot of pain out of it. I got it cranked up all the way. I can't get no more out of it. I got it thinned about 50-50, which is pretty thin. But it's definitely looking better, don't you think? I thought if we get paint in there, that the snow won't stick to it. And coming down this direction, I can still hang on this end and turn it. See, that's got pretty decent coverage. I just turn this up. Just sit in here and there's no paint. I think that the temperature was warmer. I had a lot better luck with it, but when I get this out, I'm going to take it in the garage and put a little heat in on it, get it to dry, not fast, so it's ready to go when I need it. The forecast looks like it's flurry for a week or so. 
got much accumulation, but when we get it, I just want to be prepared for it. And last year, I think I, I, think I saw this off. If I don't get to it, say it snows at 3 in the afternoon, come home from work or whatever, and I don't get to it right away, the next day it's starting to firm off, and that's when the, the sheet plugs up. But there was no paint in there. There's just, you know, so much use that it wore all the paint off. My guess is because this is a gloss that, uh, you know, the snow won't stick to it. So that's my plan, guys. So I'll show you a finished result. And then I'm going to go ahead and uh, lube the chain and grease the fittings and grease the drive shaft and, you know, just do little things. Maybe put some shoes on it and... Um, give it a run and show you what it sounds like all right I brought this back in the garage because we got a little bit of rain and I wanted this to set up overnight and the paint is pretty dry you know and uh, we got a couple runs I told you we're gonna get a couple runs they come down out of the chute I don't care too much but what we got is uh, we'll look outside here we got a little bit of snow and so I'm getting kind of not excited to get this going but maybe nervous about getting this going I want to get this serviced finish up here I want to check the gear oil there's um I just want to get this prepared there's this um, cable I showed you earlier that goes around the chute and the ends of it I should probably take some heat shrink and meld it on the very end so it doesn't fray but sometimes you bump your hands on that cable and it it'll cut you like right here I don't know if you can see that so they probably make some kind of plastic cap I can torch on there but I'm just gonna put a little electric tape it'll keep it from unwinding and it'll keep it a little bit less blunt and I might take the little propane torch and warm the tape up good. But just put that on there. Just a little something. And then down here, I put a, a light on it so we can see better. Hopefully I won't get in your way here. But on the gearbox, here's a vent at the top. That's three quarters. I'm taking this out. And... I know I painted over it, but I checked it before I painted it. I thought these would turn. Um, you want you want the vent to vent so it doesn't blow a seal and leak. I've never seen that leak anywhere. But I want to take this out, wipe this off, and I I think I'll just blow through it. And what that'll do is ensure that it's vented, which it's not. So. Like I said, I don't think my paint did it. What I'll probably do is get a pair of pliers and see if this will spin freely. This probably moves back and forth. It probably got bumped or something. So I'll grab a pair of pliers. Oh, I can hear the squirrel wants to come out. Want to do a little hunting? Hmm? You do. You want to come in and help Dad? What we'll do is we'll... Where are you? <laughs> you want to go hunting? I think he wants to help me on the snow blower. What we got is uh, I've got some pliers and things, and I want to try something. Maybe hold it with one set and turn that little vent cap with the other. I just want to make sure this is is going to vent freely, so it doesn't build up pressure and cause a leak. And let me see if I can get it rigged up here. I know, a pair of ice strips will work. It's kind of, kind of cold out, and this garage isn't insulated. So I don't like to run heat very often. It just, to me, seems like a waste. I could use a salamander or something, but I just don't want to waste, consider that waste. So I suffer sometimes with the gloves. 
All right, now get in view here. I just thought if I could break this free without damaging it, try not to squeeze it too hard. To me, I thought this should turn and or move back and forth. And I don't see anything happening here. There's writing on it that looks like a part number. Um, but like I said, you should be able to blow through this, and it's not. And if you can see, the paint didn't get down in there, so I don't think I painted it and hurt it any. Well, I'm going to monkey with this a little bit, and I'll come back on. I want to get this freed up. What I did was I put it in a vise, and the cover popped off. And this is a brass valve. It's got two little side vents. Had a bunch of junk in there. I put it in a brush wheel on the grinder. Clean that up. There's a little bit of rust in the cap, if you can see that. So what goes in there is this has a little rubber plunger. If you look down in there, you can obviously see through it now. And... Um, this little rubber stops in the bottom, little valve. Let's see if I can get it down in there straight. And that seat's in the bottom. And then this spring had some crud on it. Still got a little bit. That sits in there like that. Then the cap goes on. And I just used a little pry tool and this popped off. Let's see if it'll snap back. Let's see if I can hear it. Maybe, maybe not. Just want to get that back together. Let me look at it, see if it's not quite round. But it should. It's not too bad. Should fit on there. I don't know. To me, this is kind of important. I hate to put new gear oil if I need it in there and have it blow all out all, you know, seals and so on. Make sure this is working. I want to press that in. See if it goes on there. Hear that go. It goes. Hear that? And then it doesn't swivel like I thought it would. But what I do realize because the rubber sits in there, it's only a one way. You can't pull through, you got to blow through. But because that spring is in there, I'm going to assume that it's got to build up a lot of pressure, more than I can probably blow. And uh, as far as this turning, the distance after that just snapped on there is greater now than it was before. It's almost like it was hammered on too far. But I think we're good. It appears that it is a working valve. And I want to make sure that's on there. See, it's not moving any farther. Somebody might have forced it or I might have bumped it once. I'm going to leave this out for now. And I'll get back over here. The uh, This is a drain and this is a fill. And I, I'm sure you just fill it. Oh, that's a half inch, not 9 sixteenths. I'll be right back. And I just want to take the fill, the half inch, yep, break that free. I want to see the color of it. Um, I think when I bought it, and this is how long it's been, right? Um, when I bought it, I put fresh fluid in it, but I didn't document anything. I think the previous owner told me to check it. So it's not coming out. The plug is super clean. And let me see. You usually put your finger in there if you can touch the fluid or not. See the condition. Look how clean that is. That's pretty nice stuff. Hi, squirrel. Come over here for the camera. So, I just hardly bent my finger down. The fluid is there. I'm going to put my plug back in. I'm not going to put... Well, you know... It does smell like gear oil, but it's super clean. I'm pretty sure I put 90 weight in it. 
when I did it before and this doesn't get run that much if this was a bush hog where it's running for hours and hours I'd probably change this it's not it's not even dirty so I'm not gonna worry about it and like I said I just want to check that vent it may not be venting proper but I took it apart it looks okay parts are in there put it back and then now I want to move on to greasing the uh, drive shaft here has a grease fitting on both ends I gotta see what kind of grease I have I don't remember if it's white lithium I don't remember what I bought last alright I don't know if you can see it but I finally got the grease to take on both of these and it comes right out here there we go right right here oozes out and I turn the auger this one I had a heck of a time I took the fitting out messed with the fitting I did a lot of things on this one and I got that to come right out there too can you see it and I'll just take the excess and throw it up on the chain so now we're gonna do the drive shaft that was quite a struggle with a grease gun in this cold weather get up here on the drive shaft I haven't hooked this up to the tractor yet I see my lights tipped um, what I want to do with this is uh, take sometimes it's easier with the drive shaft still unhooked and get the light in there and right there is a the fitting and I just going to grease both ends of that and then I want to check on that shaft there. I'm not sure if there's another fitting on that. Now, this shaft cover is not in too great a shape. I'm not going to worry about it too much. But there's a grease fitting here, and that took grease well. Can you see it? Come right out there nice. And then there's another grease fitting in there that finally took it. And then there's a third one up here for the PTO itself. So I got that locked on. So that part's done. We've got our cable covers on. We've checked our lube. I got the two auger grease fittings done. And then now I see there's another one. This bearing that I showed you that I put on right here. This has, this is a sealed bearing. This doesn't have a grease fitting on it, but there is one. If you can see it, where is it? I don't know. I gotta look again. Swing this auger around, and right there. Can you see this fitting? There's one right there that needs a lube. And then if I follow that across, let me see if there's one on this end. It may not be because it's a straight shaft. Um, this cover is welded on as part of the frame, so I can't. I'm going to have to start the tractor and raise this up. I'll be careful not to raise it too high so I get to that next fitting. I don't know if you can see my lights I put up there to help me this winter with uh, snow plow because I get blinded back there. <laughs> I just replaced the fuel filter. Okay. Look at that, guys. I didn't even spill my coffee. Good job. Then uh, I get to roll this shaft around. And I want to grease that, but now I can see in here, this bearing on the end, I think is all part of that same thing. Let me get my fat head in here. It appears, as I roll it, there's no other fitting. So that must take a whole lot of grease. And then down this end, I'll spin it. This spin's really easy. I told you this is... Kind of a quiet snowblower. 
and yeah there's no fitting down there so let me line this up if I had uh, the bendable I told you I had a lot of trouble with grease guns so the only one I got working good is this straight one time for another grease gun I don't know if I can fit right here or not and this has a new tube of grease in it they all have a new tube of grease in them now but none of them work Let's see if that's out. Not, not a good enough angle. Don't ever buy one with a straight on it. Uh, let's see here. I'll go straight down. You probably can't even see it. Like that. Kind of. Mm. Alright, well I'll come back on and show you. I'm going to have to lay down under this thing. See, this is working pretty good see that it's oozing out over here i don't know if you can see it so yep. i think i'll rotate the auger a little bit yeah you can see it coming out right here yeah so it looks like i've got that and the bearing everything with lots of lots of loop in it and so i think i'll just oil up this chain a little bit and uh looks like we're ready to rock guys i can go out and show you a test on it and that'll end the video here. And if you had any comments, put them down the bottom. See if I'm missing anything. I, like I said, I didn't get an owner's manual with this, so it's basically common sense stuff. Just trying to keep this thing in good shape. It's a pretty heavy duty unit. And the tractor is only 25 horse, so pretty hard to tear this up, probably. But for this many years old, look how quiet this is. It's pretty quiet. I try to take care of it. So I'll show you when I back this out and fire it up. Here's a pair of plow shoes. I'm not sure if they fit this model or not. I'm not even sure I got any of this one. But uh, I had these kicking around somewhere. And if you want to see right here, that's where they would mount. And that's not even a a machine cut hole looks like somebody did it with a torch mine might have i don't recall but uh let me see if these feet in there looks like they will and then i can adjust the height to this and the way you do it i gotta raise it up a little higher is these have washers and spacers and you do whatever you have to do and then you put your tractor pin in it and uh for now i'm not sure i'm even going to put them on but see yeah these fit on there i think they're just a basic but i don't think i'm going to put them on there but what i wanted to show you i think i'll test them out without it first i did tell you i was going to put them on there but on can you grab me that washer i dropped on the uh, thanks on this tractor, what I love about the three-point on these Fords is this right here. Now, as I lower this down, look at the light gap across the concrete floor. What you want to do is mount it. I'm trying to get out slow. has this lock lever you put that up and we want to make this rod longer I'll go about three or four turns and we'll lock that back down I think I went the right way I couldn't see it let's try that it looks like it's clutching Yeah, a little too much, yeah. Okay, guys, so that's, that's what's pretty cool about it. It's pretty easy and fast. So, I went four, I'll go two, and I'll try it again. See how that's set down nice and Yeah. Easy. Okay, now the next thing I want to show you is if you can stand here and get the whole view of the unit, when I go up 
and I set it down. I want it to set flat on the ground. And see how it tips forward? Yep. That to me tells me that the anchor is going to hit the ground. So now you take your top link, loosen this up, and you want to make this link shorter so it tips farther forward at the front. So it's one, two, probably go about three turns with it. Lock that back. Now watch the difference when that sets down. It shouldn't roll so much forward. It did a little, didn't it? Just a little. Alright, we're better. So now I want to shorten that up another half an inch or so. Loosen that nut up. See, this is adjusted to the last implement I had on, which I don't even recall. I think it was the wood chipper. Let's see if this is any better now. It still rocks just a little, and it's partially because there's no shoes on it. But let's look at the auger now. You don't want the auger to touch the pavement. And you see that we're clearing by about one inch, right? Yep. So, to me, that looks like we're not going to be banging in the driveway. And that's what that worn, you can see that sharp edge there. I showed you before we painted it that this was hitting a few times. And uh, this will scrape the driveway right down to a quarter inch sometimes. I don't, just don't want to hurt my auger doing that. But uh, let's take it out and test this. quiet see how nice that works guys yeah so this is it definitely looks better you definitely want to stay away from this portion while it's running but you see how nice a chain we run nice and smooth it's not binding i'll probably dump a little oil on that um i do have some grease on it the drive shaft is about a you know seven degree angle ten degree whatever i think we're pretty much ready to rock on it this here this shoe this spins pretty easy. This spins better now than it did before. And you can see the pain in there now. So I'm hoping maybe you can see down in there. But you see that fan should work pretty good. And the tractor can run this at idle. It just won't have speed enough to throw this off. So let me uh, test the spot on this. And see how well it works. I think I got everything all green. works pretty good 
And if you uh, like the content, please subscribe. Hit the like button if you will. And uh, hopefully we can have some cool videos coming up. And uh, right here shows, you know, how this would want to stick to this. But uh, brand new paint like that I think will be okay. Like I said, when we uh, get wet, heavy snow, this is packing today. Packs pretty good. But uh, when that freezes overnight when I had the problem. And it tends to stick in the chute. But that come out pretty nice for only having a half inch of snow. And we're expected to get one to three today. It's not enough to do the driveway, but... This will get slippery. So please follow along, make a comment, and uh, we'll see you on the next one.